Welcome to Behind the Prop Podcast, where each week we will bring you stories, lessons, and some tips from Behind the Prop. Please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Pre-show checklist. Microphones. Check. Out check. Complete. Recording all channels. Checked and verified. Pre-show checklist complete. Our Bravo Tango Papa is holding short, ready for departure. Bravo Tango Papa, you are clear for takeoff. Have a great show. You're clear for takeoff and we'll go. Bravo Tango Papa. What's up, Wally? Hey, Bobby. How are you? I'm good. This has been a ton of fun doing the show. We've got a ton of topics to cover. Thanks for everybody who have, have taken time to submit a show idea for a free behind the prop coffee cup. We will be shipping those out. and You probably already got them by the time you're hearing this episode. Uh, and we would love to hear more ideas. If you have ideas for the show, please don't hesitate to shoot us an email. I can be reached at bobby at behindtheprop.com and Wally can be reached at wally at behindtheprop.com. Send your show ideas and we will we'll add them to the list. We've been having a lot of fun. Well, I think I have. Wally, have you been having fun oh, doing I've, the show? I've been having a blast. <laughs> we had our first guest on a couple weeks ago. We have more guests lined up in the future. This is uh, kind of, uh, I'll say, reinvigorated an old guy who was looking for a, a new fun way to give back. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's doing the same thing for Wally as well. This week is all about the ignition system and a magneto check. Uh, we've, we've had ideas that we would do systems and things like that throughout spattering throughout uh, the podcast shows that we do. And this is really the first kind of systems item we're going to cover. I feel like I'm way behind the power curve as two guys sitting in a room. One of us knows a lot more about it than the other, and that would be Wally. Uh, but I... I think I have a, a, a view from a flight school owner's perspective on what things continuously kind of happen, how we think about it, uh, how, how things do get broken and get fixed. And Wally has a view of a pl- airplane owner himself and uh, things that he sees and check rides that we're going to kind of run through today for sure. So we're going to kind of give an overview of the way we think about the ignition system in a magneto check. Then we're going to kind of talk about Common things we both see um, with pilots, renters, checkride candidates, and what what it happens that either throws them off or causes them problems. We're going to talk about some best practices as it relates to troubleshooting and resolving some of the symptoms that you may uncover. And then we're going to tell you a little story that uh, might help you all be a better pilot moving forward. Wally, give us, because you do know it better than me, kind of almost from ignition switch through the system, kind of walk us through the way you think about the ignition system and the magneto check, and then we can dialogue a little bit about how we do the magneto check and what the checklist says. But let's start with an overview of the ignition system. I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to make this uh, extremely, extremely basic. I'm not an AMP. I'm not a mechanic. Um, but I do operate these airplanes, and um, uh, hopefully I op- operate them safely. So, you know, on a check ride, um, I am required to, uh, private and commercial, I'm required to cover three systems. One of the systems is engine, or power plant is the way it's uh, listed in the, the ACS. Well, within the power plant system, um, there's a subsystem called the ignition system. That is, um, you know, usually when we think of ignition, we think of, of starting the engine. But in fact, the ignition system is, is what's igniting the fuel, uh, which is making the pistons within the cylinders, which is eventually turning the, the propeller. So the ignition system is, is constantly working within the airplane. So uh, basically, the components of the, magni- of the ignition system are, um, uh, you know, you've got, you got the switch, which we all uh, have right in front of us. Um, there's a starter, which actually starts the airplane. But once, once the airplane gets going, uh, and we're talking about traditional airplanes, we're not talking about an electronic ignition airplane, uh, we have a magneto system. Um, and the root word in magneto is magnet. So basically, we have magnets turning around, which are uh, providing uh, power to the spark plugs, which are igniting the fuel 
air mixture within, within the cylinder, which is making the cylinder, the pistons go up and down or side to side, which is uh, eventually turning the propeller. So um, we, in most airplanes, we have this thing that we do before we take off called a magneto check. And uh, the one thing that we do is we, we, you know, most airplanes have two magnetos. Um, and we shut one magneto off at a time. And those are referenced normally as left and right. Correct. Um, correct. And, and that, that just, I guess, from my, what I've learned, you know, there's two magnetos. That is, each of those magnetos have a, a, a line, a wire that leads from them to each cylinder. Correct. Uh, to, to each spark plug. Each, Correct. each magneto goes to each spark plug. So each, let's, uh, f- for, for demonstration purposes, let's talk about a four-cylinder airplane. So a four-cylinder airplane will have two spark plugs on each cylinder. So each magneto is providing power to four spark plugs. So basically, when we do the magneto check, we're shutting off a magneto, which in turn is now shutting off four spark plugs. So um, when we do a magneto check, a typical um, four-cylinder Lycoming or Continental airplane is, is somewhere between 1,700 and 2,000 RPM. When we, when we switch to one magneto, we're losing somewhere around 100 RPM. So we're losing about 5% power. Um, is the airplane still running? It is. If everything is working properly, is it running smoothly? It is. Um, will the airplane fly like this? Could you do this in the air? You could. Um, and in fact, um, some people are advocates for doing a, a mag check in the air. Um, but uh, basically, you're, we're shutting off half of the spark plugs, and, and each, each cylinder is now running on, on one spark plug. And again, we, we don't lose half the power. We lose maybe 5 to 7% of the power. Is it something that's noticeable? It's not. But what we're doing is, is by doing that magneto check, we're checking a whole lot more than the magnetos. So by doing the magneto check, we're checking the whole integrity of the ignition system. So if, if I ever get to be king of the world, one of the first things I'm going to do is we're going to quit calling this a magneto check, and we're going to call it an ignition system check. And it's in fact some some of the the newer airplanes refer it to it as the ignition system check check as opposed to the magneto check. I think what um, younger pilots do is if there's a problem during the magneto check, they immediately attribute it to the magneto. And uh, they'll tax the airplane back. They'll go up to the mechanic and they'll say, hey, the, the left magneto is, is bad. When, in fact, it could be a wire. And most likely, the most likely culprit is a spark plug. And, and one thing I try to encourage um, younger pilots to do is, is when you are speaking to maintenance people, don't tell them what you think is wrong. Rather, tell them what the symptom is. It's just like when you go to the doctor, um, you probably don't go into the doctor and say, hey, doctor, I, I have a, uh, I've got a kidney stone. You may want to say, hey, I'm, I have pain in my back, and uh, this is what's going on. And you let the doctor make the diagnosis. Uh, same same with, the, with maintenance. If you come in and you say, I was doing my magneto check uh, when I was in the left position, the engine was running extremely rough. Okay, let them make the diagnosis. Now, if you come in and tell them you got a bad mag, most uh, I, I I would venture to say that every mechanic is going to really say, well, it's probably not a mag; it's probably a spark plug. And well, they're fa- probably going to say right then in that moment, "Did you try to clean the spark plugs?" That's the first thing they're going to probably say. Um, and I think that's probably, as you mentioned, the first most common thing that we see in the magneto check. Rough running engine, that's the symptom. The normal culprit, first and foremost, would be a fouled spark plug. Yeah, absolutely. The, 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 the problem that we have with these airplanes is on the ground, 
these engines run too rich. So there's there's too much fuel uh, that that is not being burnt. So th that fuel turns into carbon, which builds up on the spark plug, and it makes the spark plug either less efficient or totally um, totally inefficient uh, to where it's not firing at all. Um, and if if you haven't listened to any of Mike Bush's uh, podcast or any of his webinars, I would highly recommend that. One thing that the, um, uh, you know, the whole COVID thing with Oshkosh being canceled um, this past year, um, I, I watched a lot of virtual seminars. I'm a, a big uh, a fan of Mike Bush. He's uh, uh, the maintenance guru uh, for general aviation airplanes. Um, and, uh, I, I'd highly recommend any of his, his things, but he, he does talk a lot about this and a lot of what I had been saying to my applicants was a little bit reaffirmed by, um, some of his, um, some of his, uh, ideas and thought process. So the, the point is that taxiing around on the ground, we're really running these engines too rich. And, uh, so the fuel goes unburned and it, it does deposit carbon on the spark plug and that's what happens. So now, when are we going to see this? If we have one spark plug of a cylinder that is not running efficiently, uh, under normal circumstances on both, we're never going to know it because the other spark plug is, is working just fine. Uh, so where we're going to see it is when we go to the mag check, when we shut off that good spark plug on a given cylinder, and now the only one that's running is the one that's running that, that may not be working at all or may just be inefficient. And the reason for the rough running engine is basically the, the, the engine is unbalanced. We've got one cylinder on one side that is working, um, you know, maybe at 100%, and the, the other one at the other side may not be working at all or maybe working at a, a, a lesser percentage so we don't have the equal force of the pistons uh, balancing the engine out. And that's where we get the rough running engine. So, um, again, this presents itself in what we call the magneto check, and it's not a magneto problem at all. It's a spark, spark plug problem and easily fixable. And a lot of the airplanes have a procedure in there for cleaning the carbon off the spark plug. So I would encourage you to check your POH or if you don't have anything in the, in the POH, check the, uh, um, with your mechanic or the, the flight school or the FBO that you're renting the airplane from. So we go through this cleaning process, and then we do another mag check. So we're checking the whole ignition system again, and we don't have the rough running engine. We, we've probably cleaned that carbon deposit off. All things are good, and we move forward. I, I've, I've seen a lot of different things happen. Well, what are some other common things we might see? Um, we've talked about the wires. The wire would, would act exactly the same because it wouldn't be getting fire to that system, meaning that spark plug. So we would have that same imbalance in the engine, but we wouldn't be able to clean the wire. Obviously, if the wire is bad, right. we're never going to be able to solve that from the cockpit as a as a pilot. Um, I, I've seen I've seen this where actually a cylinder presented its itself for the first time that we had a cylinder issue. Right. Um, I, I think it's been within the last year we had a, a ring that that had come off of a cylinder that. We didn't know. We weren't aware of it, but it presented itself in the magneto check. And here, and here we are. The, the, the cleaning process obviously is not going to replace the ring on a cylinder, but we have the same rough running engine, very similar symptoms. Some that have been around a long time would say, I can't believe they're unable to clean that, right? Well, that's a, there, there's a point where you can't clean, and the cylinder actually was the problem when we replaced the cylinder and we went on. Any other thoughts or ideas that we would see common things that we might uncover during a magneto check no that that um that is the most common and and what i hear when i uh discuss this with applicants on check rides is um i i will present this situation to them and uh they'll they'll say well the the magneto is fouled well, it's 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 not really the magneto. Um, it's it's the spark plug. Now, in the big scheme of things, are we 
is it just a terminology thing or, or uh, you know, do, do we, we not understand the system? Probably don't understand the system. Um, do we need to understand the system to, to safely fly the airplane? No, I, I, don't, I don't think we do. It sure helps things. And as an aircraft owner, it sure helps when you're, when you're talking to your mechanic. But um, one, one story um, that I'll share, I, I had an applicant, and um, it was a young lady coming for a private pilot check ride. And um, she did a, a really, really nice job, flew, flew the airplane very well. The ground portion went really well. But she told me the story about how um, she was prepping for her check ride. And uh, it, it was springtime, so the, it was getting warmer. And she called her CFI, and she asked her CFI if he would mind if she brought her daughter along with her for this particular flight. They were doing their, their prep right before the check ride. So she was, um, uh, you know, far along in her, her private pilot training. And the CFI agreed to let her bring her daughter. So she came out, and they got in an airplane. They were in a 172, an uh, N model 172, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, they taxied out, and uh, they did their run-up. Everything uh, appeared fine, and uh, they started their takeoff roll, and she said to her instructor, um, the airplane doesn't feel right. It, it doesn't feel like it's the right, um, it, it's making enough power. And his comment to her was, well, you've, you've got your daughter in the back, and, you know, she's 100 pounds, and you're just not, you're not used to that. And she said, okay. And so they took off. And um, during the climb out, she uh, reiterated to her instructor that it just didn't feel right. It didn't, the airplane didn't seem to have the power that it normally has. And his comment to her was, well, it's, you know, it's also getting warmer. Uh, you've got an extra 100 pounds. And last time you flew, it was 15 degrees cooler. So we have less performance. And uh, she said, well, okay, all right, and they kept flying. So um, just think about that for a little while and, and think about what uh, you might think might have been the, the culprit. There was, there was a, a slight issue, and uh, it all turned out fine because obviously she came back and earned her private pilot certificate just a couple weeks after that. But um, I'm going to leave that there and um, let you guys think about that. I believe Wally's going to give you the answer to that story next week on our yes. show. Yes, and if you have some ideas about what might be the problem, um, just shoot me an email at wally at behindtheprop.com. So the other common thing, and we did, we did mention it, was that the magneto itself could be bad. And I, I challenge people because I've, I've done a little bit more systems digging as a fly school owner than I ever did as a private pilot or instrument pilot. And I don't think many people know what a magneto looks like. It, and I don't think I want you to know what it looks like when you pull one out of the box. Like I want, I want you to go on the Google somehow, some way, and, fi and, and find some pictures of a magneto and what it looks like. It's actually a, a spinning item. It's spinning the whole time. And the, there's four leads on a four-cylinder engine. There's four leads. And as that magnet goes by those leads, it creates a spark, which travels down that wire to the spark plug, in essence, creating a fire, and the, the cylinder of the piston works inside of that cylinder. Um, the timing in the magneto could simply be off as well. I yes. think um, too often, if I bought a magneto every time someone told me that a magneto was bad, or as you said, a magneto was fouled, I would be broke. Um, because it's not necessarily that the magneto is broken completely, but that timing can be, be fixed. And that's where you might see an unusual drop in in one side or the other so i might have that 125 rpm drop in one side and 180 in the other that would that would indicate there's probably something a little off a little askew could be the magneto and and as a flight school owner i would challenge you to not say both magnetos are bad <laughs> come right. in and talk about the symptoms on the left i had a hundred rpm drop on the right i had a hundred and eighty rpm drop um, I believe that it, it should be looked at by a professional. 
And I would say this too, if, if you're out doing your run up and you, you see that, um, every one of us has a cell phone with us and, uh, taking a video of that mag check, um, to actually show to the mechanic, because I, I, I'm not, I'm not stupid. I know as, as a pilot, I come in and I tell mechanics stupid things. And as soon as I walk away, they're rolling their eyes at me. Um, but video, video is really helpful. Um, anytime I have situations like that, I actually use it with, with our airline, um, uh, you know, strange head scratching indications it's real easy just to pull out your iPad or pull out your phone and take a 10 minute clip. I mean, a 10 second uh, video clip of what it's doing. And, um, um, usually you can, you can email it or text it to somebody. And that, that picture is worth a thousand words. No doubt. And that's a great tip. Um, I would highly recommend that for anything that you see. If you, um, happen to see a problem with a cylinder on a, on a, in the in flight, one's hotter than the other. Take a video of that. It, it could be an indicator. It could be a real problem, but it's going to help your flight school and your mechanic a ton by having that information as you saw it readily available for them. So, I guess the the last uh, best practice I think I would share, Wally, is there's uh, I've had a lot of CFIs come through here, and the, and those CFIs had varying personal minimums, right? I've had CFIs that if it was if it was a 50, more than 50 Delta, they weren't going to fly that aircraft for the day. Some have a hard line on the POH, which I would be my hard line probably, unless I heard something, right? What would, what would you – would you have a pilot create personal minimums around what they're going to see and do with a magneto check? If I can't clean it, I'm not going. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty simple one. But what would your thoughts be from a – a mentor to some of these younger pilots on, on how you would reflect on a magneto check that might not go just right. I, I would go by the, the numbers in the POH. And obviously if it's, if it's running rough, the engine should run smooth. So a rough, a rough running engine, uh, to me means it's an unbalanced engine. Um, you know, these, the, O. Most of these engines are O three twenties or O three sixties or maybe an I O. The, those those letters actually mean something. If you have an I O, the I stands for injected. It means it's a fuel injected airplane. Um, not going to be any carburetor heat. There's no carburetor. Uh, if it's just an O, uh, my my one seventy two is an O three twenty. O stands for opposed, and what that means, uh, the root word of opposed is opposite. The cylinders are opposite of each other. And the reason that the engines, when running uh, properly, run smooth is that the, the um, action of the pistons are counteracting each other. They're opposite of each other. So if one piston is not um, operating properly, um, that causes basically that engine to be unbalanced. And that's what causes a rough engine, a rough feeling engine. So don't feel obligated to go. That's kind of, the, I think, our tip to you, right, is is have someone else take a second look. Have someone jump in and do a run-up with you and, and make sure that they do the magneto check. Um, but, but don't just assume that it's just one spark plug. Make sure someone looks at it if it's still rough uh, and you can't clean it by the, by the flight schools or the FBO's procedures. Um, hopefully you've learned a little bit about the ignition system today. We're going to do more systems like this pieces at a time and hopefully uh, as people want to learn more about systems they can come back and listen to all these episodes and learn more today i happen to have learned something myself which is which is good um if you want to learn more about the ignition switch the system in general there's all kinds of information in the airplane flying handbook and your poh those are the two places to look first anything to wrap with today wally no, that you made a great point, Bobby, and talk about the airplane flying handbook. There's so many great resources out there. I, I remember as a, a new private pilot many, many years ago, um, sitting at home, sitting, uh, sitting up in, in, in my bed with the TV on, and I, I reached down and I found uh, my FAR AM, and I started reading the AIM. And I just remember that it was a light bulb moment in my flying career. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, there is a lot of good stuff in here. 
And I still, to this day, I, I, there's so many resources out there, but I go back to the Airplane Flying Handbook, just some of the basic books. Boy, if you want to learn the ignition system, it's not a, it's not a six-chapter uh, dissertation on how the ignition system works. It's about a page and a, page and a half. It's actually fairly easy reading, and it's it's really good stuff. Yep, use those books. We talked about the AIM a couple of weeks ago. It's it's a wealth of information, and uh, too too few people too few people actually open it up and really read it. Yeah, but it's got a lot of really good information in there. With that, we'll wrap. As always, fly safe and stay behind the prop. Bravo Tango Papa, we are clear of the active runway and would like to taxi to park. Bravo Tango Papa, taxi to park. Great show. Have a nice day. Taxi to park. Thanks. You too. Bravo Tango Papa. Thanks for listening to Behind the Prop. Please follow us on social media at Behind the Prop or visit our website www.behindtheprop.com. Until next week, fly safe everyone.